The recording has started. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, we are going to uh, finish up our study on Elijah in Revelation chapter 12 and also um, the Elisha of the end times. And before we begin, I want to ask the Lord to lead and guide us in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask that you um, pour your Holy Spirit on this pulpit right now, Lord, and you um, put me aside and that you let your words speak and not my words, because my words are dirt, Lord, and I have no salvation in me. So, Lord, I ask that you put your words in my mouth and you let the Holy Spirit speak and teach us so we can understand, because um, these events that are unfolding um, around the world are prophesied and we are to be expected to um, walk with you in these prophecies and fulfill prophecy as you expect. And Lord, I ask that each one is, um, is heartfelt and convicted to do so as the Elisha message uh, will soon be growing around the world. I ask Lord that you uh, continue to bless those that are online and that are on the phone that you uh, please give out a special blessing to anybody that's a visitor that's listening, that they'll continue to uh, want to spend time understanding more about your end time message of the three angels. Uh, thank you so much for these things, and I say this all in your precious son's name, the name above all names, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Joel chapter 2 says this, Fear not, O land, Verse 21, be glad and rejoice for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid, you're beast of, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up and the trees bear its fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully and he will Cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first months. And the threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. That should ring some bells. Ellen White says this about it. Uh, the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than mark its opening. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel, when was that? When was that? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, we... No, 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 no. So, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let's go through the spring feast. What's the first feast? The first Follow the train of what Jesus did in his life and his sacrifice. What did Passover. he do? He had Passover. Then what did he do after, so after, he, after the Passover? He died on Passover. He was a sacrificial lamb. So then what? Is that it? No, 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 no. There's the first feast of spring. Good, good, aunt, good try. But so what's the next spring feast? Next spring. What did Jesus do? Go through his train. So what did he do? He died or I mean, he would he was sacrificed. OK, no, no. What's the what did Jesus do when he died on the cross? Where did he go? He went to the grave. What does that represent? Yeah. The feast of? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the feast. There's four feasts. What's the next one? Did Jesus died, and what does that represent? John, our, Paul reminds us of this, that he is our Passover, the unleavened bread. He is the unleavened bread. Remember? So the Feast of Unleavened Bread, he fulfilled that in order. What's the next one? What did he do when he, when he, because that means he died and he rose. What are, and then when he came out of the grave, who, who did, what happened? He came out of the grave. <laughs> the, the earth, 
and graves were opened and first fruits came right okay so then the first fruits and jesus and all those who were amazed went to bethany or the mount of olivet and they were taught for and he spent time for how many days 40 days then he said prepare yourselves for the former rain <laughs> for the former rain the former rain so what's the next feast so there's passover unleavened bread what's the next one first fruits, first fruits. and then it was poured out the holy spirit 50 days. days is what pentecost, pentecost. Oh. what is the former rain the pouring the holy spirit out ah where do you find that um, I think prove to me i don't believe you how would you show somebody that in scriptures where would you where would you discover the backstage pass what was the most important part of the pentecost was it that people were hobbling and hooperling and inside the pews and rolling in the on the ground and speaking in these weird languages no that doesn't even exist they're just babbling what was the most important part of Passover or uh, pentecost the Holy Spirit was poured out. Where, where do we find that at? Remember, it was the coronation of Jesus as the high priest. That's the whole reason for Pentecost. And where would I prove, where would I show somebody that that's in scripture? <laughs> Remember the backstage pass that we got a glimpse of, that John was given vision of? Because in one part, Jesus there was john was seen in vision the angel said come up here and so he went into vision and he looked and he saw one sitting on the throne and there was a 20 there's a four living creatures and the 24 elders and the seven spirits of god were there and then there was lightning and thundering and earthquakes and that was but there was people there was things that were missing there was a roster but there was things that were missing who was missing and why were they missing Jesus isn't there. The angels aren't there. Why, were, why weren't they there? Where am I talking about? Where do I find this? In, Where's the scripture? In Revelation 4. Revelation 4. This is where Jesus is dying on the cross. He died on the cross, and then the angels came to pick him up to bring the war hero home. And we find that backstage pass in Revelation 4, and then John saw that there was a scroll... Well, read the whole thing. The whole thing is Revelation 4 and 5 are, to, right. You asked us to be able to share this with somebody. Right. So we're going to need to, to Right. So for for long time now, long time now, we've seen those scriptures. We've seen Revelation 4. We unpacked Revelation 4. And John wept much because he saw that there was a scroll in the in the in the one that was sitting on the throne that's the god the father there was a scroll in his hand and nobody was able to open the scroll and so he wept much those words there we should be able to go, oh i know where that's at because john wept much that is serious that is serious language there this is like a catastrophic weeping when jesus wept it's catastrophic that he wept. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he wept for. He's catastrophically weeping. When John is weeping, it's because the whole universe is a catastrophe because no one is able to open the scroll. This is huge. This is one of the most important elements of our existence as an Adventist, to be able to bring this into a train of, of, of chronological order, to say, oh, now there's that one though that says, but, but John wept much and one of the elders chapter told him, five. do not worry. Yeah, this is chapter five. Chapter five is the, the whole theme of Revelation five is the lamb is worthy. Why is he worthy? because he was, he said, do not worry. Look in the midst of the four living creatures. Behold, the man, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb slain 
from the foundation of the world is able to take that scroll. This is where we go back to Psalms. Um, uh, uh, Psalms chapter 24, where there's the, the uh, angels arrive with Jesus and say, open ye gates, open ye gates of glory. And they say, who is at the gates? And the king, the one mighty in battle is coming. And they say, who is, it's him, the Lord mighty in battle. We see all these pieces that we can put together to say, this is the most important part of Pentecost, that when that former rain, and it says there in Joel chapter two, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former and the latter rain in the first month, for he has given you former rain faithfully. This is guaranteed. And you know what this is? This is Elijah message language. The Elijah message language connected with the feasts and the, the coming of Jesus Christ the first time, his death, his sacrifice, his resurrection, his ascension, and then that most important part of when Jesus came again. And so when she's saying, when Ellen White is saying the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of power of God, then marked its opening, the prophecies were, uh, which were fulfilled in the outpouring of former rain at the opening of the gospel. At the opening of, so when I ask the question, what is the opening of the gospel? We should be able to say Pentecost, pouring out those seven spirits of God. That is the most important part of the former rain, is that Jesus Christ was able to die and resurrect and accept. He was worthy to take that scroll. That scroll is so important that John wept and knew that it was ca catastrophic. The whole universe was in disarray and silent because nobody was able to open that scroll. What is that scroll? Jesus took it. And this is the introductions the seven that will, no, no, no. After he accepted the scroll, the seven spirits of God is a gift to draw all people to be inside that scroll, written in the books of life. It is the inheritance of God's people, the history of God's people and why they're here in heaven when he brings them home and why the wicked are down there why they have not come home this is so serious this is the most important part and what makes this grow is that rain the wheat it says right there the threshing floor shall be full of wheat what is that wheat what's the wheat what's the wheat What's the wheat? The Somebody. End of the earth's history? No, it's the people of God. Remember, there's wheats and tares. <laughs> wheats and tares. What do you think the wheat is? It's that grain that's crushed into flour. It's another representation of the wheat that's crushed into flour, we'll see you later, is also the word of God. Assimilate it. And then you eat it. And now you're that wheat. You're that. You're the, you're the witness, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the martosia of God, the martyr, the one who will die for Jesus more than anything else. What makes that rain grow? Is that seven spirits that was poor. So when Ellen, see Ellen White is so beautifully, she knew what, what she was looking at is exactly what we're discussing right now, that that uh, God had, God then marked its opening. I'm talking, I'm speaking, I'm reading Great Controversy, page 611 and 612, um, that the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marked its opening, the seven spirits of God. That gospel was poured out 
with what? The Holy Spirit. And remember that Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of might, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of knowledge, righteousness, faithfulness. Righteousness will be wrapped on his uh, the, uh, the loins, the belt of his loins, the fear of the Lord. These things were all poured out as the Holy Spirit. Do you want to have knowledge from the Holy Spirit from the throne room? Do you want to have wisdom that comes from the throne room? Do you want to have counsel from people who are guiding you because of the throne room of God? Do you want to have the fear of the Lord? Yes, the fear of the Lord. Do you want to have righteousness that comes from the throne room of God? All these are the gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the spirit and what does that gift do it rains on the ground and it produces finish the sentence what does it produce what did the spirits the spirits of god produce what fruits <laughs> if there's rain that comes down what do you expect the rain to do sprout yeah. sprout get you away i hope so with the Holy Spirit that will have wisdom and knowledge and counsel and might, the understanding, the fear of the Lord, righteousness, faithfulness. Okay. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord. I've been after a while. What is the fear of the Lord? The, the, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And here we go again. Here we go again, and it connects with what? That the Holy Spirit, it's not afraid of the Lord. Right. You're not afraid. It's right. not saying, because Jesus was always saying, fear not, it's me. The angels would come and say, fear not, it's, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. No, the fear of the Lord, through when you read Proverbs is and Ecclesiastes, is the reverential awe of God, that he created this whole universe. Reverence God. Amazingly created the most vast, and men are still trying to figure it all out. Even this black atmosphere that they can't even figure out, even though God has created laws to show what it really is to reveal it. And yet he'll come down straight down for just you, little old me. Personally, that's the fear of God, that he loves me. Even if I was the only sinner, he would come and save me. That's the fear of the Lord. This is what was poured out at Pentecost for these people to drive thousands in to be what? The former rain and sprouts wheat, preparing them so that when they would die, it would just be asleep and they would be raised again during the time of the end as the Elijah would be bringing, bringing people closer to the Lord so that when the bridegroom comes, he comes to pick up his bride. On the Mount of Transfiguration, oh, please tell me who was there. Tell me you know who was there. Peter, James, okay, finish the set. Who was there? Moses and Elijah and Jesus Christ. Yeah, because Jesus was in his in, in full glory. And what, what was the representation? You had the full spectrum of the second coming there. The full spectrum. You, you had the disciples that trusted in the Lord. And then you had Moses and Elijah nourishing Jesus. Why Moses and Elijah? The Old and New Testament. Oh, well, Elijah's in the Old Testament, so is Moses. It represents something. Oh, yes, the law and the prophets, true. And yes, not just because it's the testimony of Jesus Christ, it's the law and the prophets. It was representing as well, most importantly, that those who would die would be raised again that followed Jesus Christ, Moses. You find this in Jude. And then 
there was those who would be alive and remain. Did, did Elisha die? No, he was translated. You had the full spectrum of the second coming there, showing the latter rain. You had the disciples that were looking and going, should we build an altar? <laughs> what does God the Father say? No. He says, listen to him. Quit talking. Listen to him. Because they still didn't understand, but they trusted the Lord. And that's this whole concept here. So many pieces of this concept of what she's talking about in great controversy. Here are the times of the refreshing uh, to which the apostle Peter looked forward to when he said, now this is the important key about being, in, being there when the latter rain falls. This is what Peter said. Repent ye therefore, and he can and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall, shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall, shall send Jesus. That's in Acts chapter uh, 3, verse 19 and 20. What was the key? So when the seven spirits of God were poured out in the form of rain. As a form of rain, what was that rain doing? Producing people that were convicted and broken and going, man, of, man and brethren, what shall we do? Repent. Repent. Be baptized, all one, every one of you, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit, wisdom and knowledge and counsel and light and understanding, the fear of the Lord, righteousness, faithfulness. That was a gift. The most important part of this former reign, and remember, let's go back over this. Let me nail this in. Like she said, the great work of the gospel. Remember what that gospel is? Okay. The, what did Jesus Christ testify? Go back to Genesis 3.15. What does Genesis 3.15 say? And I will put enmity. See, people forget. They, they see gospel as a good news, and they don't seem to want to connect the idea that there's going to be a, a period of hardcore labor, labor pains that go through that because we're in a sin-filled, perverted, sick world. And we're completely bombarded with this. But Jesus says, I will put enmity. That's the everlasting gospel between my seed and your seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Showing that, yeah, you might crush his head. Crush his head, yes. Okay, crush his head. It's, yes. The concept there, though, is, is that the people after me will stand in place of me and show that I am the Savior, and there is no other. And that is the concept of Moses and Elijah, the former rain, the latter rain. When it comes into this concept, she says that's the gospel, that we will stand so strong because Jesus is our Savior. Nothing is going to penetrate us, even though we're stuck in this sin-filled world of pervertedness and deception and enmity that's against God is not the close. And so the great work of this gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than, than Mark its opening. And that opening was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The prophecies which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain, that's what she's talking about. I should be able to go, rewind, 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 rewind. Revelation 4, Revelation 5. It's the intro, and here's another thing to understand. Jesus received a scroll, and the scroll had what on it? Seven seals. Oh. So Revelation 4 and 5 is an introduction to the Seal. seven seals. It's introducing that when Jesus receives that because he is worthy 
to receive it. He pours out a gift, wisdom and knowledge and counsel and might and understanding and all these so that people will grow through that rain that just came down on them and they will be able to be inside that scroll that when that scroll is finally unveiled and unrolled, it's like you are here with me. And those refuse to, unfortunately, are there. And this is why. Revealing a document that is our inheritance so that all the universe will see that he is true and righteous and faithful. And they deserve to be there. So that's why Jesus pours out this gift as the former rain so that later there would be a latter rain that would produce even more fruits. The former being Pentecost. And she continues, the prophecies which were fulfilled at the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel, Pentecost, are again to be fulfilled in the latter rain at its close, the close just before the doors close of probation. The mystery of God shall be prophesied as it says in Revelation chapter 10, and you shall prophesy again to nations and kings and kingdoms and tongues and people. He says, you must prophesy again. And then the mystery of God, before the seventh trumpet sounds, oh, right there, right there, when that breath of an angel, that's where we are right now. The mystery of God would be revealed to all his servants. So that means the clouds are forming, things are happening, winds are happening, strife is happening. Do you, do you see what's happening in China right now in the South China Sea? They're, they're like literally gathering around Philippines and they're just like at literal like hand-to-hand -hand combat over there. Do you see what's happening in Gaza right now? Do you see what's happening in Lebanon? Do you see what's happening in Ukraine? Do you see what's happening in Russia? Do you see what's, wow, the winds of strife. And you know what that's pointing to? That the four winds are being, they're being let go. And Jesus said, hold back, hold back, hold back. I'm not ready yet. No, I need more sealed. I need some more. Some people haven't been sealed yet. But that means that that rain is going to dry up. Do you understand that? That's why it's so important to receive this rain and obey faithfully what the Lord said. So here are those times of refreshing to which the apostle Peter looked forward when he said, and he looked forward. And what did he look forward to? To remind us of how we receive this latter rain. It's not by us. It's not by our might, not by our wisdom, not by our understanding. Repent ye therefore and be converted, be converted. That means that your life isn't just a life of outspoken I believe, but that you actually demonstrate it. What do you believe in really? So what is the gospel? Do we just go, do we just go home? Yeah, <laughs> well, it is a part of love, but there needs to be principles that are wrapped around that I know. We say, you know, we give a lot of lip service, man. There's gotta, we gotta end. The, the whole, Laodicea is not, is not the apostate Protestant churches. I, I'm just gonna be bold about that. The apostate churches, Protestant churches. Laodicea is a direct one church. It is one church. Us. And we define that by looking at Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, that says, and the dragon was enraged with all these churches and denominations, free and, you know, just non-denominational, maybe, maybe. No, it says, and the dragon is enraged with the serpent or with the seed of the or the remnant of the woman who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. One church, one woman, that's it. 
There's another woman. That's it. There's only two sides. It's either you're with the harlot and her and you're part of the daughters or you're with the woman and you're a seed of that woman who is Jesus Christ, as it says in Galatians chapter 316. You understand? So that Laodicean message is to us. And the way that we produce the fruits is to quit being vomit, quit being asleep, quit thinking we're having need of nothing because we, we need everything right now from the Lord. And, and, and what is the devil doing? He's right now. What is he doing to that one remnant church, man? He is literally just trying to destroy it. Now, I'll tell you this much. Just like the just like the times in Elijah in the Old Testament, the, the Israelites didn't just like suddenly flip a switch and go, wow, Baal is cool. I think I'll worship the sun now. No, they were conditioned and conditioned and conditioned. Sister White calls it little wedges. Little wedges that eventually became one big obstacle. Until you, you don't even realize that you got someplace. You yes. Back, you don't know how you got there because it was little wedges that were hitting yes. And and this is how this is how it happens today. Boy, go look at the Loma Linda website. Wow. Whoa. You talk about apostasy, man. La Sierra. You well, yeah, but I mean just recently, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, merging together with the Catholic Church. Yeah. You shouldn't be surprised. You shouldn't be surprised. You should be able to identify and go, that's going to happen. You should look and say, pray for them and say, that's going to happen. We should be able to know the difference between clean and unclean and go, mm, 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 and then try to explain and show and teach people through scriptures, through wisdom and counsel and night. Is that and, the medical facility? No, it's a whole church. That's okay. a theology students and they're, they're, they just went through a whole council with the Catholic Church. Oh, you think you? This is just a little inkling of what's coming around the corner. But we're told to that be converted. The institutions are going to fall. Yeah. So we should not be surprised. We should not be surprised. We should pray for them and say, Lord. Pull the people out of Babylon. My people. He says, my people come out of Babylon. <laughs> yeah, things are happening rapidly. So in that concept, we need to go back to our our uh, our study. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to try and wrap this up. Yeah. Because I have a... Because, okay, so... After this, um, I want to get into the study of who really is the Antichrist. And in that concept, we're going to see a lot of the second century, third no, century. Well, but can you show somebody? They, they don't. That, Ninety-nine percent of the world does not believe what the true Antichrist comes from is in the scriptures. I I need to know from scripture. I can say, well, it's it's the you know it's it's the Roman papacy. People laugh. I I can't just say it. I have to let Scripture say it. You know. I mean, people have no clue. Who who's studying their Bibles nowadays? Lord have mercy. No Bibles. Bibles schmibles. Please, we have tradition. I'm telling you. Um, so we're going to look and see that um, the elements uh, before even the Antichrist came around, knowledgeable, God-fearing, who had faithfulness towards the Lord, were already going, that's the Antichrist. It's coming. It's coming. Even before it came. Yeah, Paul was, was one of them, but... Then we could see the elements later on, like I said, in the second century, the third century, as the things were unfolding. Um, 
And then um, after this study with the Antichrist, we're going to also be looking at um, some history that came from this place called Lights Unshackled, which is really a, a good, it's just a 24-minute thing that shows the, the history of what we've been looking at and studying, and it confirms it and through history. Um, and then we're going to be moving from Revelation 12 to Revelation 13 and, and looking at all the elements there that shows what that's about. And w because we know that the abomination of desolation is what? What's it, what's, what makes it desolate? What, what abomination makes it desolate? Church and state. And we're going to see, we're going to see the earth beast and its quotes and all the quotes that are amazing how people prophesy without even knowing what they're saying, not even realizing they're speaking straight out of the Bible and they're enjoying it. They're celebrating it. It's shocking. Oh, the, the church and state. Okay. So anyways, so today, let's. I want to just kind of breeze through this part until the last bit of it. Um, the last part, I have some things to say about this. But remember that um, the issue of conflict that involved the law of God through the time of Elijah, or, or I mean the, the conflict between, um, in the Old Testament, Elijah and the Israelites, Ahab, Jezebel, false prophets, was the law of God, worship, and the gospel. The issue in the Old Testament story involved God's own professed people forsook the law of God. God's own professed people practiced false worship. And God's own people forsook the true gospel and embraced the false. Okay? Now, this fits very well with enmity. You know that, right? It fits very well because if you don't, if you are not letting the Lord put on the, his robe of righteousness on you, you're going to end, end up embracing sun worship. And then you're going to accept the authority of whatever tradition, such as in the Old Testament, was swirling around you, which was Baal worship which Baal was the sun god, okay? So was it happening in, in the old time of worship? Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam. We read that. So did that happen during the time of the Thyatira church? Remember, the fourth church period is the 1,260 day prophecy of the Roman papacy, the fourth church period, which was what? The church of sacrifice. It was the time of sacrificing God's people. Uh, Revelation 14, 9 through 12 says, so they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? In the end times, the issue is about worship. 24 times the word worship is, is in Revelation. Five of those times is in Revelation 13, describing the conflict of the end time. It's not about politics. It's not about social justice. It's not about the environment. All these elements fall into play. It's going to end up being about worship. And man, do I have a clip after clip after clip of showing the Earth Sabbath Sunday, the Sunday Alliance, the movement of the Lord's Day Alliance, all these elements coming together to bring forth. Well, that, that's being taken from climate change. Right. That's what I mean. All those elements fall into those categories. The main concept is worship, and they do it through these means. And so they go, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's the industries that are causing climate change while they're flying in the air, spraying balloon, barium and aluminum and strontium and all these other, and now they just openly admit it. They don't even care anymore. They're just bold faith. Oh, I accidentally hit the radio, and here they are just talking about the, the geoengineering. How they, they don't care anymore. 
Oh, it's a better of, it's a lesser of two evils. And who's creating that? So, so what, is, what is happening? Is the falling on, on... Well, it, it changes so many things. And so then the environment, the fires get worse. The, 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 the plants dry up. Things, things can be controlled. Controlled weather programs. And oh, these things are real. <laughs> they really do happen. And so if you can speed up the or make the course of hurricanes get worse and worse and more constant in one place, what do they say? Oh, we, but it, and there's where the Earth Sabbath Sunday comes in. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's what the part of that. But um, that, what's really shocking, like the Earth Sabbath Sunday movement, um, especially in Europe right now, uh, just uh, put out another commercial going, you know, we need to all rest on Sunday all together at one time. And now there's more nations and more nations that are signing up and doing this and closing shop. And boy, this is fulfilling prophecy. It's not about politics. It's not about the environment. It, how are you con what? How are you connecting one day out of the week? It's going to actually change. But people fall for it because they panic. They don't realize. They don't see what's happening in the background. You know, our church and, and many uh, Adventists, uh, what is it, Adventist Today online, AdventistToday.org is literally telling everyone they need to stop putting out the great controversy, that it was a joke. It's just a, it's just a stupid concept. That's AdventistToday.org. Why would they, why would the devil want that to stop? Yeah. Because why? Because it tells the truth. It explains the reasons why these, the, it, I'm telling you right now, either Ellen White was a prophet or she wasn't. Either, the, and there's so many elements that point to that she had the same spiritual gift as did as Isaiah, as did Peter, as did Paul. Because why? Because it's the same Holy Spirit. Now in that concept, I have to take her and line her up and see if she lines up with all those others that were walking with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And people are trying to figure out, well, you know, let's debate this with the Sunday guys and let's, no, all you have to do is take this through prophecy, show the line of prophecy of how the, the prophetic movement was presented before it even came to pass and that there would be a prophet in the end time, a prophet. And she has the same concepts as did Elijah, as did Isaiah, as did Peter, as did Paul, as did all those others who were, it's, she's not authority that is greater than, she's just walking with the gift of the Holy Spirit, which was the spirit of prophecy. Peter had that, Paul had that, Isaiah had, then that must be the same spirit. And I have to show that it is the same spirit. Therefore, she is a, the spirit of prophecy for the end times. It's that simple. So 24 times it's in Revelation. Five of those times, five of those times are in just that chapter alone in Revelation 13. Okay. And so the first table of law, was that rejected during the time of Elijah? And it happened. And when Ahab saw Elijah, he said, is that you, O troubler? And he says, I have not a troubler, but you're, you have and your fathers have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals, the sun god. So in Daniel 7, 25, it's the, it's the same church period as, as the fourth church period. This is the church of Thyatira. It's just being spoken of in Daniel's time. And he speaks pompous words against the Most High, persecutes the saints of the Most High, and shall intend, change, uh, shall intend to change times and laws. Same concept as in the Old Testament. We're looking at the same concept, that this is the Jezebel. And this Jezebel doesn't have um, a time where she dies completely forever. She has a time where she is... Uh, her her deadly wound is administered, but that deadly wound comes back or she receives or resurrects and she comes back from that wound. Therefore, everything else must come back as well, which is Elijah, the kings, um, the false prophets, and they're all there. Um, the tearing down of the gospel truth. 
Did, did that happen? Yes, it happened in the Old Testament. What was the gospel sanctuary truth? Do you know what that is? Remember this concept here? Remember, this is the sanctuary. Where is the daily in, in the sanctuary? Where's the daily in the courtyard? So did they tramp in the fourth church period? Did they destroy the table of showbread? Well, they worked on it. They didn't destroy it. They put darkness over it. We'll see that later in during the seals. We'll see how they actually didn't destroy it. They put darkness over it. And in the seven branch candlestick, the light, did they make it go dark? Almost. It was just barely flickering. But Jesus kept that lamp lit through all that period and the altar of incense did they change the way that people would pray they would pray to the saints the holy mass which now it's all been dedicated to balder but all the sun god mithra worship this is all a concept of mithra who is that belly of the beast persia because the beast belly is leopard a leopard like and that is all Socrates, Aristotle, the whole mindset. That's what formulates the idea of myth or worship, which is where there's only one entity that takes that banter. There's only one. There's, it's not Buddha. It's not Confucius. It's not Islam. It's not Jew, Jewish. Only one. It's not Mormon. It's not. It is only one. The Roman papacy can only be one. And oh boy, that just doesn't, but we gotta be not, we have to show, mm, mm, no, we have to, we have to bring the three angels message and get people out of this Babylonian empire. So, uh, oh, uh, let's see, how do I get out of here? Back to this. I'm still learning these things. Okay, so, so they did, they tore down the daily sacrifice, right? Uh, it's parallel verse. Then he, the beast, opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Revelation 13, 6. So here's interesting. There was no rain during the apostasy of Elijah, during the time of Elijah. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of our of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except my except at my word. Was there no rain during the fourth church period? Well, re now this is important, which we'll study later. Is Revelation eleven? It's a whole concept of that deadly wound in detail. When that beast ex receives a deadly wound from one of its heads, Revelation 11 literally describes that in detail. W microscopically goes in and look at all the detail. What does that mean, the deadly wound? And Revelation 11 is that whole description right there of the seventh or the 1,260 year end of that period. And who caused that to end? Who, who administered that deadly wound? Napoleon Bonaparte, France. Revelation 11 totally brings this all into deep, deep detail of how that happened, okay? And what does it say? These, that is the two witnesses, have powers to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy because they prophesied how? In sackcloth and in darkness. They still prophesied. God still kept the food on the table, barely. The ravens were feeding the Elijahs. Huh? No, I, and you know, and another interesting thing is if you go back to 1 Kings chapter 17 and you read about Elijah with the widow, boy, she's in Jezreel. He goes to Jezreel by the, uh, by the command of the Lord. Jezreel is in the land of Jezebel where Babylon sits. So he has, Elijah is in the end times. Are we not stuck in the Babylon? The Babylonian mindset is worldwide. And he has to go and he goes and helps a widow. 
and she's just gathering little sticks and she has just all and you read this in uh this the the uh, fifth seal that a quart of wheat and a little bit of barley is for a denarius in other words it's really expensive and this is here's that widow with barely any flour remember what the flour how do you make flour out of wheat which is the word of god and oil and he says you hold that oil you hold that water and you make me a little one and then you give some to your son and to yourself after me because she said i'm gonna go die now and he's like oh this is so powerful it's like wow what a prophetic message because that is pointing to the 1260 year prophecies a prophecy of when the elijah ran in the wilderness and was all i mean no rain no rain was happening that means the holy spirit was gone the bread was gone it was not gone it was just really really expensive the bibles were impossible to get practically but still there was these elijah's in the wilderness and this is what it's talking about these have power to shut heaven that no rain so that no rain falls in their prophecy notice the reason for the scarcity of rain now this is important and i didn't put this in here but in deuteronomy what is this rain deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 1 and 2 what is this rain okay verse 1 it says give ear O heavens and i will speak who's speaking the lord this is the lord and hear O earth the words of my mouth let my teaching drop as the rain what is the rain teaching of the lord my speech distill as the dew as raindrops on the tender herb and as showers on the who's the grass what is the grass we learned that before laura remember remember the grass is the people you find it in psalms chapter one grass are people when you're talking spiritually prophetically symbolically oh isn't that interesting and as shower on the grass for i proclaim the name of the lord ascribe greatness to our god wow so what is the rain it's the teaching of the lord through his mouth which is through his word that rains on the people and and sprouts and then it's supposed to produce what what does rain produce? Fruits. So that the vine starts to grow and then you can cut it back and trim off the bad parts. You see where abiding in Christ in John chapter 15 comes into this concept to where you let the rain fall on you by his teaching through the word of God so that you can demonstrate to others why they need the rain. You see? So, why the scarcity of rain? When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, now we just learned what there is no rain, or command my locusts to devour the land, or set pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by, name, by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and then the rain will fall and forgive their sin and heal their land. Why was there a scarcity of rain? Because nobody was humbling themselves. Boy, doesn't this sound familiar? Nobody's praying, nobody's seeking the Lord. They turn their, uh, they're not turning from their wicked ways. These are the people of God. I'm not talking about the secularism and all the Marxism. I'm talking about the people of God. So where there is no rain, there is a famine for the word of God. And that's what it says in Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. It says, Behold, the days are coming, said the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, not a famine, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea, from north to east, and shall oh, north to east, and run shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. 
This is during the close of probation, but it fits very well to why there would be no rain. And there would be a famine in the land. The length of the famine was three years and six months. That should be very relevant. Elijah was a man like a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly and that it would not rain. And it did not rain in the land for three years and six months. And that was just like in the Middle Ages. But prophetically, symbolically, she was given time. How much time was she given? He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, shall tame, change times and laws, and the saints shall be given in his hand for time, times, and a half a time. That's Daniel 7, same time period. And it says there in Revelation 2.21 about the fourth church. And I gave her time, that's chronos, to repent of her sexual immorality, but she did not repent. So he gives her time. The reason why there's scarcity of rain, right? In Revelation 11.3, right? This is describing a dead wound in detail. And I will give my power to i will give power to my two witnesses that they will prophesy 1260 days in sackcloth for 1260 days so so now was there a faithful remnant yes there was in the times of of, of elijah there was a a remnant all those who had not bowed the knee to, to baal um and then also in the time of thyatira it says now i say to you to the rest and that's not a good translation. I don't like that. It should be to the remnant because the word there in, in Greek is loipos, which is remnant in Thyatira. As many as do not have this doctrine, who not, do not know, known the, have not known the depths of Satan, as they, have, as they say, I will put on you no more other burden. Hold fast till uh, what you have till I come. So there was a remnant inside the church of Thyatira. Who was it? That was the Elijah uh, in the wilderness. Was Elijah blamed for all the problems? Oh, yes. As the Lord God lives, there shall, and there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you, Elijah. And when he said here, uh, he is not here. He took an oath from the kingdom and the nations that they because they could not find you. So they were looking for Elijah because why? Because they were blaming everything on him. Is it the same there in the time of the wilderness? Then the woman fled in the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. That means she might fly into her place where she is nourished for time, time and a half a time. Why? From the presence of the serpent. So we know that they were just hunted. So this is definitely Elijah. When they were nourished, the woman in the wilderness fled. We don't have to go through all that. Jezebel was a murderer. And so was the Jezebel during the long, hot summer. It says there in verse 6 of Revelation 17, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs uh, of Jesus. And I saw her and I marveled with great amazement. The false prophets of Baal failed, were fed at Jezebel's table during the Old Testament. Were they fed at the table during um, the time of Thyatira? Well, what's interesting is, is not only the prophets, but also in Daniel chapter 11, where it says there, it's interesting that it says uh, in these Old Testament uh in second kings that they sat at jezebel's table and in verse 27 of daniel 11 it says both these kings hearts will be bent on evil and they shall speak lies at the same table and this is during the time of the fire tire period of the church where kings even the oh did the kings sit at the table of jezebel during the old testament yes now these two kings they had two mindsets a north and a south one believed in god but worshiped baal the other one didn't care about who god was but they still mingled and they had an easier way to just bring in all those pagan idols and those pagan worships and that's how the roman papacy brought themselves and they used the kings in this way as well and both these kings at, ate at the same table of Jezebel and they acted like false prophets as well so um and the bible commentary uh volume two uh page uh what is it 1038 it says 
uh, with her seductive arts. Jezebel made Jehoshaphat her friend. What, did she have a daughter? Yeah, she arranged a marriage between her daughter Athaliah and Jeroboam, the son of Jehoshaphat. She knew that her daughter brought up under her guidance as and as unscrupulous as herself would carry out her designs. Did her daughters do that or her daughter? Yes. Are they doing that now? Yeah. The beast has false prophets who does a beating. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and the mouth out of the false prophets. So yes, and this is even at the end times. Jezebel was cast into a sickbed along with those who committed fornication into uh, with her. And that sickbed was the uh, French Revolution. It says there in Revelation 2.22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. You know what that great tribulation was? That's the French Revolution. That's at the end of the 1,260 year period, unless they repent of, her de of their deeds and they did not repent. Um, so Elijah at the end times, the Elijah of the Middle Ages was not the final Elijah. Okay, the Middle Ages, that, that Elijah in the wilderness, the conclusion of the story has not been written. Jezebel was not slain. The false prophets were not slain. The great and terrible day of the Lord did not come and the church was not translated. It's not there yet. So this is an open end story that hasn't finished yet. We are to expect the final Elijah to complete the story. How do I know that? It says it in the Bible. You see, if I show people scriptures, they're more compelled to believe what I'm showing them, especially if, if I say, do you believe in the scriptures? Do you believe in the Bible? How wholeheartedly do you believe in the Bible? Well, I believe it's the word of God. There's not okay. So as I'm showing, I don't, I, I, I tell people, that's not me. I, I have nothing to say here. This is all coming from scripture and it's confirming what history already said. History said these things happen. Bible, the Bible already confirmed these things long before the history even arrived. And you, you have to take this home to yourself and say, well, I need to maybe change that. And if you don't change, there might be some consequences to that is what I explain to people. We have to be serious. Things are seriously changing. Look what it says in Malachi chapter four, verses one to three. For behold, the day is coming like a burning like an oven and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble and the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that, that will leave them neither root nor branch, but to you fear my name. There's that fear, Kelly, fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and you shall go out and grow. What does that mean to go out and grow? It's just to stand there in a field and just kind of blow with the wind? No, it's to produce seed because you produced fruit. You understand the fruits of the spirit cannot grow unless we allow the spirit himself to grow within us. It is the holy, it's the, it's the gift of the spirit, not our gift. It's the fruit of the spirit, not ours. We have a problem of taking on this gift and these fruits for ourselves instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work for us. But if you fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arrive, arise with healing in his wings and you shall go out and grow like stall fed calves. And, and you know, that, that means though, that you're, you're so abundant that you gotta give it away. The word of God, you shall trample the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. The uh, post apostolic church has two stages of existence because the harlot had two stages of existence. In the fifth seal, it says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony of which they had. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge the blood on those who dwell on the earth. Okay. 
And when the white, and then, okay, so, okay. Um, it's okay. Well, no, because I started really late anyways. Ha. Okay. Okay, so what is this? How long until you judge and avenge your blood on your earth? How long is this going to be? And then a white robe was given to each of them. And it was said to them that they should rest or loy post should, should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren would be killed as they were, was completed. So there's going to be more. This is during the time of the 1,260 years. Yeah, this is hard to swallow. But where do I find this? So, so there's going to, this is all isn't going to wrap up. This is pointing to that there must be another time period of martyrs. <sighs> and boy, man, we got to really prepare ourselves, man. So where does, where does this point to? Well, it points to in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus, there's one, and for the word of God, there's two, who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. Did that happen during the time of 1,260 years? No, there's no mark of the beast yet. There's no image of the beast. What's the image of the beast? See, this comes later. This comes later. There's going to be those that are going to, these, these during the 1,260 years needed to rest a little while longer. And let me tell you, that wasn't a small group. You know, there's over 50 million people that were slaughtered and burnt at the stake because they carried the word of God. They stood up for the Lord. There's going to, there's going to be more, but they will be given what? White robes to each of them. And so this hasn't all been completed yet. And so it says, and then the harlot had two stages of existence. So the beast, the false prophet will be speaking. Um, and this is interesting. And channeling demons. Because Jezebel channeled. She was a witch. She did democracy and she channeled spirits. Do you know that there's a spiritual hub in the United Nations? It's a political organization. If you go to this place called worldgoodwill.org, it's the spiritual hub of the United Nations. It comes from the, the it, it's the, it's the website. It, it's the, yeah, the website is what's formerly known as Lucifer Trust. And you look on that website on worldgoodwill.org, it shows there it says on one of the pages, if you scroll down just a little bit, it'll show you that they're part of the United Nations. And it says service and divine plan. And you click that and you'll see this slew of like, what is a, what is a political entity doing in this to where they're preparing for the coming of the Christ, who they're gathering together the world servers for the one? And then they have writings there on that website that talk about the externalization of the spiritual hierarchy. And when you dig down deep enough and you look back and see who's the author of this, they say, well, it's Alice Bailey. She's the one in Foster Bailey. Well, she was one of the very rare 33rd degree Freemasons. And she started the League of Nations. There's a whole reason why the United Nations started, and it wasn't because the Jews were being slaughtered. God forbid that was horrible. That's not the reason why the United Nations was started. They had to create a reason for it to start. The ends justifies the means. So the end was, well, we needed a United Nations. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, let's just slaughter a bunch of these people, finger it on this guy named Adolf Hitler, because he's the son of the Catholic Church. His whole SS movement was the Inquisition. Hello, was it not? It's just a modern day Inquisition. And then people go, oh my goodness. And then they go, and then you put in your, inside the leaders of the Zionist movement, not Jews, Zionist political organization, 
who will banter their people and say, we need to have our land back. And so then they go to this United Nations that they created and they say, what do we do for you? And they say, we want our land back. And they say, absolutely. All to, and look what's happening now. Look what's, so that everybody is gonna be full of chaos and say, make it stop. You haven't seen nothing yet. All the while, they're channeling demons. Because she channeled demons. Okay. So the harlot has daughters. Elijah is broadened from the Western Europe all the way to the end of time. Okay. And so during the end of time, we're seeing this unfold right here. Where, where John the 23rd at the Vatican Council says this. She, the Roman Catholic Church, to be, uh, is to be an affectionate, kind, and patient mother. She is moved by compassion and goodness towards her alienated children. You know, Loma Linda is growing in compassion to this. Just this week, just two weeks ago, the words of Pope Paul V during the council before he died, he said, because of their position, separated brethren are the object of deep and tender affection on the part of the mother church. It is a love that feels grief and sadness, a love of a heart wounded by estrangement because the estrangement prevents our brethren from enjoying so many privileges and rights and makes them lose so much grace. You have to go through the church. But perhaps for this very reason, it is love, it, its love is all deeper and more burning, is what the Catholic Church says. What does Ellen White say about this? Babylon is said to be the mother of harlots. By her daughters, by her daughters, uh, must be symbolized churches that cling to her doctrines and tradition and follow her example of sacrificing the truth and the approval of God in order to form an unlawful alliance with the world. Then I saw the mother of harlots, and that mother was not the daughters, but the separate and district uh, distinct from them. She, the mother, has her, has had her day, and it's pa- and it is past. And her daughters, the Protestant sects, sects or the Protestant leaders were next to continue on the stage and act out the same mind and the mother uh, that the mother had when she was uh, persec- when she persecuted the saints the daughters are going to do the same okay so we know the identity of the dragon and the very last bit of this is that who is the remnant of the seed of revelation 12 The woman's seed has already been identified as Christ in the first five verses of the chapter. So the remnant of the seed must be the remnant of Jesus. And these are going to be the ones that are going to have to stand for and be the Elijah that is going to deal with what's happening in Revelation chapter 13. Those who keep the commandments in a testimony of Jesus. That's why it says, don't fear these things. Don't be afraid of these things. If you walk with me with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, I will bring you back to the way that we should be so that you can come home. This is our message. This is our method. And this is the way we try to drive people back to the Lord so that they can go home as well. I don't know about you, but this is a serious time. Things are going to unfold seriously quickly. We have to be prepared. I don't know how that's going to be, except I know that I need to study the word and be prepared so the Lord can guide us through the wilderness. So with that said, we're going to sing a hymn. Let's take our hymnal and... Stand uh, and turn to 412 and stand as we sing Cover with His Life. <clears throat> Look upon Jesus, sinless is He, Father impute His life unto me, my life of scarlet, my sin and woe. Whiter than snow, cover with his life, whiter than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my life of scarlet, my sin and woe. 
Deep are the wounds transgression has made. Red are the stains, my soul is afraid. Lord, all to be covered, Jesus with thee. Safe from the love that now judges me. Covered with his life, whiter than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my life a scarlet, my sin and woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow. Longing the joy of pardon to know, Jesus holds out a robe white as snow. Lord, I accept it, leaving my home. Gladly I wear thy pure life alone. Come Whiter than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my life a scarlet, my sin and woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow, reconciled by his death for my sin. Justified by his life pure and clean, sanctified by obeying his word, glorified when returneth my Lord, cover with his light, whiter than snow, fullness of his. Then shall I know my life has scarlet, my sin and woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow. Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask that you cover us with your, your life and your robe of righteousness, Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Things are wrapping up, Lord. It's getting really serious now. And Lord, I ask that you guide and lead us because we need to be prepared. And we're going to be going through a time of great trouble like it's never seen on this earth. And Lord, I just ask that you prepare us even before that day that we're ready. That we're ready to accept the Elijah as a latter rain, just as it was for the former rain. And we teach people and guide people to be ready for you. And this is how we walk with you, Lord. And I ask that you do that for us just now. Uh, save us when you come. Bless each one that's here and it's online and is listening to this message through either ways and through the technology that they have. Um, and I thank you for all these things. And I say this all in your precious son's name, the name above all names, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and until we meet again, God bless, and may the Lord keep you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So my husband is out there changing the tire right now. And don't forget, everybody, next week is uh, potluck. Next week is potluck. Okay. Bye. Bye. God bless you. God bless you.